This is a crow. This is a murkrow. And both of them are capable of murder. Howdy friends, my name's Eric and welcome to AKA Facts. Today's topic is the title used for groups of animals, AKA collective nouns. Collective what? You say? Nouns. You know, person, places, things. I'll demonstrate with the well-known one. So you have one crow, two crows, and if it's more than two, then it's called a murder. A murder of crows. Fun fact, the proper name for collective nouns of animals, we're referring to groups of animals, is terms of venery. It's coming up with words for when you hunt groups of animals. Let's make like a flock of seagulls and get to it. When referring to a group of cats, we have to distinguish their age first. When they are kittens, we can refer to them as a litter or a kindle. When referring to cats in their adult life, they can be called many things, including a clouder, a glorying, a glare, a pounce, or a nuisance of cats. I guess it depends on your mood. Interestingly though, if they are not domesticated, they get a different name for the group, which is a destruction of cats. And since we're talking about cats, let's talk about their prey, which is rats. Rats can be referred to as a colony, a pack, <laughs> hence pack rats, a swarm, or a plague. I personally like the idea of rats being called a plague of rats. It clearly must be a reference to the Black Plague back in the 1300s. And then there is their brethren, the mice, which are known as a mischief of mice. Which is, I would say, pretty accurate. Rats are plague-bearing and mice are just mischievous. Unless you're thinking about the bubonic plague, in which I'm pretty sure mice were involved in that too, you dirty buggers. You know what else eats mice and rats? Owls. Owls are known as a stare or a parliament of owls. Other creatures that may be staring at you at night may be raccoons in the forest. Be mindful not to disturb this gaze of raccoons. They're probably just begging for food. You know what, I'm changing this. It's going to be a gaze of trash pandas. Let's look at something a little bit more aquatic, shall we? There is a school of fish, a pod of whales, a run of salmons, a family of sardines, and a hover of trout. Doesn't stop there though. We have a battery of barracudas, a glint of goldfish. You can also call a group of goldfish a troubling. But what's even more troubling is running into a smack of jellyfish. Although vultures can be seen as a venue of vultures, apparently when they are circling the skies looking for something to eat or its prey, they are known as a kettle of vultures. Bed is the word we'd use to describe multiple oysters or clams. And if you have several giraffes, you have a tower of giraffes. Probably because they tower over you. But dum tsh. Salamanders come together and form a Congress. If you take anything away from this video, it is that Congress members are slimy little creatures. More slimy creatures include frogs, which can be a knot, a colony, or an army. I would love to watch an army of frogs take down a swarm or cloud of flies. You can also call them a business of flies, but I kind of feel like that takes away from something much cuter, which is a business of ferrets. <laughs> Imagine them with their little ties and business suit off to work. Uh, that'd be freaking adorable. In Canada, we have a pretty serious gang situation, especially in the Northwest. If you're traveling at nighttime, you have to be very careful not to run into a gang of elk. They will end you. But seriously, these things are so big that if you hit it with your car, your car will not survive, but it would. Let's head over to the farm and see what we got over there. <laughs> Be careful with emus. They are scary and are known as a mob. Oh, <laughs> but don't worry, if that doesn't scare you, there's also a gang or posse of turkey. A group of piglets is known as a pharaoh or a litter of piglets. Once they are older, they are known as a parcel or parcel of pigs. 
Unless, of course, they are in the wild, in which case they are called a team of pigs. Wild rabbits are known as a colony, a trace, a trip, a burrow, or a warren. Uh, that brings me back to the days of Watership Down. But if you have rabbits as pets, they are known as a herd of rabbits. Seals can also be called a herd or a pod, or also known as a harem of seals. Hyenas, hyena, hi, hyena, hyena? <laughs> that is one word I cannot say properly. That and penguin, penguin? Hyenas are appropriately called a cackle or a clan. Snakes can be referred to a knot, a den, or a pit of snakes. Unless they are rattlesnakes, in which case they get their own special name, which is a rumba. A rumba of rattlesnakes. That sounds really cool. We have a prickle of porcupine, a lounge of lizards. Let's get the rest of these creepy crawlers out of the way. Trigger warning. You have a walk of snails, a very, very slow walk. There's also a cluster or a clutter of spiders, which makes sense when you think about how they are born and literally come in a cluster. If you're looking at hornets, you are looking at a bike of hornets. If you want to get rid of an intrusion of cockroaches in your home, then you want to get yourself an army caterpillars. No, the caterpillars probably wouldn't do anything, but the thought of them in army formation slowly inching their way towards battle is enough to make me smile. Let's move to the skies. If you get a group of parrots together, you are starting a pandemonium of parrots. Peacocks can be called one of three things. A muster, a pride, or an ostentation. How classy. If you see a group of pelican in the sky, you may think that they would be called a flock, but in fact they are called a pod. These next two are probably my favorite entries. A group of ravens are known as an unkindness of ravens. Yes, crows can be called a murder of crows, but they can also be called a storytelling or a horde. Now, I'm guessing that this unkindness and the storytelling aspect of ravens crows probably comes from indigenous culture. There are many indigenous stories in Canada, including a mischievous crow that can talk and tell stories. Almost there. Let's finish this rapid fire. We have a clash or stubbornness of rhinoceroses, a bloat of hippopotamus, muscles, hippopotami, a consortium of octopus or octopi, an ambush of tigers, a zeal of zebras or a dazzle of zebras, a leash, a lead, or a troop of foxes. What did the congregation of alligators say to the Basque crocodile? Uh. Nothing, it was just a setup so I could name them both at the same time. If only you had the wisdom of wombats to have foreseen that. That was 50 different collective nouns of animals. Which one of the collective nouns were your favorite? Or do you have one that I didn't mention? I would love to hear in the comments below. This has been Eric of AKA Facts, signing off. Later days.